Welcome everybody, this is Rocky Horner and thanks for joining me for today's presentation. It's, you know, I'm not trying to be cryptic. Uh, I, we, <laughs> we were coming up with different topics for, for this month and the only title I could come up for for today's talk was the entry because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about here today. So the entire description of today's talk is the entry and following that, specific trend following criteria for my GRAB and 34 EMA wave studies and how I'm defining what this EA will confirm what an entry will be. So I don't know how many of you have joined me throughout the last six weeks, but essentially what we've been talking about has been this idea of taking this tool that I've been using for, gosh, 16, 17 years, and automating, automating it to a point where I can have some control over it. We're going to talk about those controls today, but essentially create an EA for trend following, and that's a big part of, you know, I, I stress that because if you're buying any kind of EA, if you're downloading any kind of EA, you have to know what it is designed to do. We spent a lot of March and I think even the early part of this month talking about the different kinds of systems, whether it's a system that's going to trend follow, look for trend reversals, look for markets that are moving sideways or breakout or breakdown. You have to know what your system is it is, is focusing on in terms of what it will define as an opportunity. Okay. Now, when it comes to systems, that's really no different than the methodology that you would use as a discretionary trader. And we spent a lot of time through March discussing that as well, where I really feel that to be part of creating your own EA, you really have to have a solid foundation in, in what it is that you want to do as a discretionary trader. You know, and you know from either reading my uh, daily trading edge updates over at ivfx.com. I don't know how many of you have been able to to check that out. Hopefully uh, you have been able to. Okay. Let me go ahead and bring that up. So whether you've been checking out the updates over at IBFX.com, one of the things that we're in the process of doing right now, and that is getting to a, actually, a, a, I don't even know that I'm supposed to tell you all yet, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. <laughs> we're actually going to have a, a standalone website apart from the Daily Trading Edge. I don't know how many of you have noticed we haven't updated this particular site, the home page, in about 10 days. And it's not because we haven't got updates. We actually are in the process of, of releasing a site, a brand new site, where there's going to be more frequent updates, access to the videos, and all sorts of goodness, Forex trading goodness, over at a URL I think we're going to go ahead and release next week, but by the time this video goes on replay, it'll be already up and live. Now realize, I'm going to go ahead and show this to you, but we're still under development, okay? So it's actually called Daily Forex Trading Edge, okay? Pretty to the point, right? So this is a quick look at where we are right now. We're, we're not done yet. We're still in the process of the development. But we'll have more frequent updates, and we'll have better organization of the different updates here. Uh, the videos will be available here, OK? Um, comments, and it's going to be a lot more, I think, helpful to you all than just a single update that I was having over at 
ibfx.com. So very excited for that. And like I said, that'll be available next week, I believe, is when we're going to go officially live. But in the meanwhile, like I said, you can head on over to ibfx.com, and we have a lot of really great updates, past updates, over at Daily Trading Edge, which I highly encourage everybody to check out. Okay? All right, so with that all in mind, let's go ahead and get on to our topic here. Now, it's not a complicated one, okay? And for those of you that had not already seen the download that's available for the grab, here's a link for it. And it's a self-installing file. that will put the wave and the color-coded grab candles on your charts, okay? So what we want to do in terms of taking this discretionary tool, all right, and then creating that EA. All right, let's go from there. I think I've kind of summed up where we've been heading. So now I'm going to talk about the specifics of, you know, and again, this is, this is what's happening, and, and this is kind of the process that I've been sharing with you all. How do you take something discretionary and, and automate it? Okay, that's, that's the transition I'm making. And I think it's a common one for a lot of discretionary traders. I don't know how many traders started off this system. I actually don't know that many traders personally. They, I know they exist. But because we tend to travel in similar circles that reflect our own trading approach, you know, I don't really travel in circles with a lot of systems traders. So there are traders who just start off trading with systems and tweak and, and back test and so forth. I, I won't kid you. I find that mind-numbingly boring. Okay, and, and obviously I'm, an, I'm a discretionary trader making, making a, a, a move partially to systems. I'm not abandoning my discretionary ways. I never will do that. But what I'm curious about is can I take something that I've used with great success and automate it, thereby reducing my time demand in front of the computer during sessions that I simply may not be up for or around for or maybe busy or distracted. And also, you know, honestly, it, it removes a certain degree of emotion, right? motion and bias and so forth. So when I talk about the controls and, and literally what I've been putting together is a list of items and I'm getting the sticky note that I, that I, that I jotted all this down on and, and what I was essentially doing is putting together a list whereby I can tell the people who are actually going to do the programming because I have no desire to be a programmer Okay, I've got th other things that are keeping me very, very busy. But what I'm going to do is try to communicate to them what I want. And, and that's something you guys have got to also do for yourselves if, if you're going to make this kind of transition. Take a tool that you like and try to automate it. So let's talk about the controls. And again, what I mean by that is here's how I'm going about communicating to my programmers what I need. Now, we're starting off with the 34 EMA wave in the grab, okay, two discretionary tools. The 34 EMA wave, what does that do to me, for me? It, it, what it does for me is it offers me a look at dynamic support and resistance within the context of a trend. All right? So, first of all, if I'm going to let this system start working, right, in other words, when is it going to turn on? When is it going to start to make these decisions for me? I have to define what a trend is, right? Now, much of my trend determination is, is very visual right now and, and to a certain degree quite subjective, right? Uh, squeezing in the market look back, looking at the angle of the wave, the, the three moving averages of the wave. I haven't found a way to really automate 
successfully, I've had programmers on multiple platforms try to do this, I haven't found a way that really does it perfectly. I've seen some that get pretty close, but I haven't found one that does it perfectly. And so what I figured I'd do, and until a better idea comes along or somebody shows me there is a way that they can take a better wave angle reading, a clock angle reading, again, remember, auto automatically, all right? Um, until then, I'm going to actually look for how many consecutive candles of red or green or blue will define an uptrend, a downtrend, or, or sideways, you know, no trend. So if I have, for example, a default setting of three, after three red candles, the system can start looking for corrections that could perhaps trigger swing trades. Okay? So if three is going to be the number, and right now I'm kind of settling on three. It might be a little aggressive, but I'm kind of thinking about three being that number. Three red candles in a row, three green candles in a row, or three blue candles in a row. Now the blue candles, three of them would basically nullify the swing trading environment. Okay? So let's go head on over to the chart and start talking about this in uh, detail. So let's head on over to our IBFX4 trader platform and specifically discuss what I'm talking about here. Alright, so if I'm looking at this chart, this is a daily dollar yen, okay? Regardless of the view that I have here, like right here, I'm completely out of the market look back. Completely, right? I'm not looking at my market memory in the, the amount of data that would be appropriate for taking a clock angle reading. All right, nowhere near that. So at what point, if I were looking strictly at a number of green candles, at what point would I say, yes, we're in an uptrend? I used to tell people roughly three to five candles, which is why I came up with my default of three. Okay, people used to always know, well, Raggy, how many green candles or up candles qualify as, a, as an uptrend? Or how many red candles or down candles qualify as a downtrend? So here, because we have the grab, I can tell the system three green grab candles and I have an uptrend. Okay, so then... I thought, well, what if there's another control I can add to that? Because then I started thinking about this. I want there to be some flexibility. Of course, we'll have some defaults, like the three candles, but maybe more conservative traders want five. Okay, maybe they're getting too many shallow entries that they're not pleased with within maybe what could be meandering or distribution market trends. They want to have a more conservative interpretation of what a trend is. So they can increase that consecutive candle option to five. Now these are all the options within the the EA. Okay? So let's say it goes to from three to five. Well one of the related items that I wanted to include as a control, and again I'm gonna I'm calling them control because I really don't know system speak. I'm really not interested in, in learning it either. What I want to be able to do is get very clear on what it is I want to be able to control. And by the way, we've been going through this process here together for six weeks. If there's something you guys want to chime in on, let me know, you know, because I'll be submitting all this to the programmers likely middle of next week, probably Wednesday is what I'm thinking. So if you have an idea, if you have something you say, well, Ronke, I'd really like to be able to control this item, okay? Let me know. So how many consecutive candles? Now, remember... This doesn't, this, is, this doesn't pertain specifically to any one time frame. Three 15-minute candles, three daily candles. It, it doesn't have, there's no specific, uh, specificity to a time frame. Okay? So the other part of this related to consecutive candles would be a percentage or number of pips of increase or, or you know, in, in terms of how much of a percentage of the value or how many pips have to move to create those higher highs or lower lows. So let's say we get three red candles or three green candles. 
like the ones we have back here. Take a look at this area right here. Okay. Kind of, kind of on the upper middle part of the screen here. We had three green, one, two, three, four, five, six candles, right? They slowly pushed to higher highs, but notice we really, for the three first, these first three green candles, did we have any kind of significant push to higher highs? We didn't. And what I was thinking is, is there a way I can ask the system to look for some sort of push to higher highs, not just green candles, but higher highs before it turns on looking for swing trading opportunities. So what I wanted to do is consider a, num incre uh, a percentage or a number of pips. Does everyone follow me here? Have I lost anybody? So I want to have a certain number of increase or decrease in the number of pips for consecutive highs or lower lows, uh, higher highs or lower lows, before it turns on. Okay? So maybe there'll be both. Maybe there'll be a setting for percentage or number of pips. So even, even something as small as, say, 10 pips, in other words, those three green candles, if it is an uptrend and, and I want to begin considering swing buy opportunities, Maybe each high has to be at least 10 pips higher than the previous high. If it's a low, maybe each candle has to have a lower low, 10 pips lower than the previous low. So there is some sort of bearish momentum or bullish momentum behind the three green candles or the three red candles. So that was another part of, what, again, what this thing I'm calling a control, the things I want to be able to tweak, okay? within the system. And, and again, I'm not changing what the system's looking for on an in a overall basis. What I'm doing is trying to define, really, what are, what are we talking about here? What is going to define a trend? You know, using grab specifically, in, in a sense. How do you define the trend? We're giving the system the criteria by which we are going to define the trend. Okay? All right, so those are the two, two criteria that I thought would be the most simple to understand without getting too cute. I see a lot of systems with lots of controls. And at some point, I think it becomes very uh, burdensome, confusing. And, you know, I, while I want there to be some control, I don't want to change the essence of what the system is trying to do. So unless there's something else that, co that I come up with, for now, the, the portion of the, the EA that's going to be defining the trend Okay, it's going to be consecutive candles with an with an optional part for percentage or uh, or number of increase or decrease. Okay, and and this will be obviously the you know kind of the 1.0 or the beta release of this EA, which I will be making available to 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 everybody. So you know as I learn and as I use the system, I'll. We'll probably keep tweaking it and making it better and better, okay, as we learn more about how I can better define a trend in this automated way. So let's, I got a question here. So if I put in the criteria where there needs to be 10 pips higher than the previous high, it means there must have a higher low first before you can make an entry. Okay, we haven't even talked about the entry part yet. Okay, so not necessarily, okay, the entry part, well, let's, let's move on to the entry part here. So the first part, number one, is how do I tell the system what to even turn on, right? That, to me, was a big part of it because a lot of systems that I see now are always on. I did not want an always-on system. In other words, trend-following systems that are always on, their criteria goes off no matter what. You know, and, and a lot of the new ones are much better, but I wanted a way for the system to kind of shut down and know that during the blue candles, I don't want to be looking for, uh, if there's three consecutive blue candles, there's no trend, therefore no signal should be given during those times. Okay? So the first part of the system was defining the trend. And like I said, this is a fairly simple set of rules here. Okay? This won't be a very in-depth, necessarily in-depth discussion, but I think it's a very important one. Okay? 
So define the trend. The second part is, okay, where is the entry? At what levels, once we've defined the trend, will we enter? Now remember, this of course is a swing EA, which means these are corrective entries. Everyone follow? So there has to be some sort of retracement of the trend. So I thought about Fibonacci and other things like that, but those are, those are extremely subjective tools that are even more difficult to define when I'm trying to automate. So I, I discarded Fibonacci, and I thought, you know what, one of the things I talk about a lot on the Daily Trading Edge is my, is my swing zone. And my swing zone often is the area between the 20 period SMA, simple moving average, and the 34 period in the case of an uptrend, the 34 uh, EMA on the high, in the case of a downtrend, 34 EMA on the low. Okay, so that creates a zone. So then I thought, okay, well, once I've defined the trend, if the price has come back to the 34 EMA on the, uh, so let's say we've got an uptrend here. Okay, I've defined an uptrend. When prices come back to the 34 EMA on the high, that triggers a swing trade. In the case of a downtrend, when prices bounce up to the 34 EMA on the low, that creates that swing short. But I've also talked about this more aggressive entry option, which is a 20 period simple moving average. So really now we have two entry possibilities. So what I want to create as, a, again, another control, okay? As a, what I want to do is have an option to turn on the aggro 20 period SMA entry and then also let the system know how many lots at that position to enter. Because usually that's, a, that's an aggro entry, right? Where I want to have fewer lots. In other words, a smaller portion of my overall position size. So I have that option, and then I'll have the option for the more conservative entry, the 34 EMA high-low, whichever, you know, obviously the trend. And then again, how many lots? Because these would be decisions I'd be making manually, so these are obviously decisions that the system has to make, but I want to have a say-so in how it's going to react. Okay, so step one is to find the trend, and that's part of the EA. Step two is the entry, and you'll have the option for the aggro entry and the more conservative entry. Okay, now by the way, uh, for the remainder of the month, we'll have a webinar discussing risk management, and I'll talk about how we're going to go through this similar discussion of controls for uh, the point of validity, defining when, a trend, when the trend follow, following entry will no longer be considered how many blue candles or for the range, how tight will the range be defined as a non-trending market. Because remember, one blue candle could be a correction. I don't want the system to shut down swing, uh, swing trading, trend following with one blue candle. But what would define a range? We'll talk about that in the next webinar. And then we'll talk about when the trend will no longer be valid, and therefore, when this system will say, okay, we're wrong, and stop us out. That will be the next talk, okay? And then the final talk for the month will be uh, profit target decisions, how to automate the exits in terms of the decision levels at which we would want to, to the upside, uh, manage our profit targets, okay? And that will be the last discussion. So for now, again, we're focusing on, on step one, defining the trend, step two, the entry. So if you have some questions, go ahead and type them in right now. I'm going to go ahead and start tackling the ones that have already come up. So just bear with me as I read them. And I'm just going to read them aloud to you all. So let's see, I'm going to follow up to the previous question you had written. which um, So the first part was, 
I, I had read, um, if I put the criteria where there needs to be a 10 pip higher than the previous high, it means there must, we must have a higher low first before I can make an entry. Not necessarily, so let's say, um, when you say 10 pips higher than the previous high, is it a swing high or just comparing candle to candle? That's exactly right. Can candle to candle, Ming Ying. So let's say we get the first green candle. You know, that doesn't make a trend, right? We've said, we've told the system at least three candles. But these three candles also, if we determine to use that next criteria for defining a trend, these three candles must have higher highs of uh, three consecutive green candles with higher highs of 10 pips or more. Does that make sense? So yes, it is candle to candle. It is candle to candle. And, and maybe there'll be some sort, and, and I don't even know what that criteria would be, but maybe we will have some sort of criteria where if there is a lower high, the system will shut down. I mean, I don't know, because we could have green candles, but have a um, lower high or even a lower low within that green candle. So, so obviously, and you're right, that is something I have not yet defined, but lower lows and, and lower highs in the context of an uptrend should be discussed. And in the context of a downtrend, that would be what? It would be higher highs, right, and higher lows. So is there some criteria at which I might look for the shutdown in that regard? I don't know yet, but it, that is a great question. Okay, and maybe, you know, the, the next version of it will have something along those lines, but it is candle to candle, so thank you for your question. Okay, Gary asks, consider how the swing EA intersects with the between the green setup option. You know, Gary, what I'll probably do, and, and, and part of this process, and I'm glad you brought that up, part of this process is, in many ways, baby steps for uh, how I'm going to go ahead and define between the greens when I create the system for that. Now, between the greens is uh, all it's, it's all five minute, so it's a, it's a five minute only uh, setup option. So as I learn from creating this EA, I will go ahead and, and think about creating the five minute between the greens EA, absolutely. So they won't be one and the same. They will be two separate EAs because we can run the swing trading EA that I'm talking about right now on any time frame, including the five if we wanted to, while the between the greens is limited only to five minutes. So that'll be a separate EA, and it's definitely something I've got in the back of my mind. So you, you read my mind there, Gary, and that is something definitely we will be working on after I get at least some sort of foundation in this. Okay, Jeff asks, three to five candles for a trend. Not much of a clock angle defined by that, but maybe I'm not aggressive enough. Well, again, it's got to be three to five green candles or for an uptrend and or three to five red candles for a downtrend. And remember that you're absolutely right. And one of the criteria may be, you know, you could crank that thing up to 10. You know, I don't know. Um, that's where... I'm going to be interested, because remember, it's not going to trigger off a trade right away, because we could have three to five green candles, but we may not have a correction to the 20 period symbol or the 34 EMA wave right away. Okay? Maybe we will, and that's one of the things, Jeff, that I'll find three to five was simply too aggressive, and you're absolutely right. Maybe it might end up being closer to, you know, 10. You know, I don't know until this thing starts to run. Um, for now, I know that after about three to five green candles, I sometimes get an angle that merits consideration for 12 to 2. Or if I get three to five red candles, I can see a situation where the angle merits a, a, a reading of 4 to 6. But you're, you're correct. It may be more. You know? And maybe for those of you that don't want those initial aggressive kind of transitional swing entries, cranking that default up to 10 would reduce those. Absolutely. And that's why I want that control in there. And you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, Jeff, Jeff, that was your question. You're absolutely right. Um, is it just my candles or something that I'd like to use? Oh, the colors. 
Oh, the color, these, this is the GRAB study. For those of you that are unfamiliar with the GRAB, the, the green, red, and blue study, that is the GRAB study, and you can download that from ivfx.com forward slash tools forward slash GRAB, G-R-A-B. Okay, and it's, it's a sentiment and momentum indicator for me. Thank you for that question, Gerald. Okay, Norman asks, what time frame am I looking to trade on? I will not be um, specifying time frame. You know, you guys know, if you've been watching me for any length of time, my preferred time frames are 15, 30, 60, 240, and daily. The time frame is going to be completely up to you guys, okay? I don't trade one-minute charts. The smallest time frame that I go is five, and if I typically trade a five-minute, it's going to be using the between the greens. So for me, I'm going to be applying this to my typical time frames, the 15, 30, 60, 240, or daily, okay? There is no best time frame for trading, period, in my opinion. Therefore, there is no best time frame for the EA. It's really a matter of where the trend is best defined. That's a challenge that I'm going to have to face because part of my trading is this triage process where I compare multiple time frames to see which has the clearest wave reading or what we call the clarity, where there is the smoothness of the wave, and the established, how established is the wave, and then, of course, the respect. Those are things that I am struggling with right now because part of my trading process is that comparative, time frame comparative process. So certainly something I'm thinking about, but I don't know how to tackle that yet, to be quite frank. So thank you for your question, uh, Jean-Pierre. Okay, so... Again, for those of you that are unfamiliar with GRAB, please check out some of the videos. But suffice to say, what we're looking at is red for bearish momentum and sentiment, green for bullish, blue is when we're neutral. Okay? And that's where I don't want this EA to be necessarily getting active during these neutral candles. Okay? So uh, back to the consecutive candles question. Yes, uh, Ming Ying, so each candle of the three in the case of an uptrend, would have to be higher than the previous high by 10 pips or whatever that quantity is going to be. In the case of a downtrend, the lower lows would have to be 10 pips or greater consecutively. That's correct. Okay. We'll be talking about profit targets and risk management in the next two webinars this month. Not necessarily today, but thanks for that question, Debbie. We will be, we will be covering it later on this month, okay? As far as candle formations, Norman, um, you know, uh, dojis and whatnot, no, I'm probably not because I don't necessarily do that that often, okay? Um, could that be something that we implement in later versions where if there's a doji, we can have a, some sort of filter where we want to see a do. I, I don't. I really don't know. I probably shouldn't even say that because I don't use candles that actively. I'm looking for specific ones, you know. But I, I don't. I don't foresee that. I don't foresee that. Okay. So you know, for example, if if we were looking at this dollar yen, okay, and this pertains to Scott's question, you know, we've had certainly enough in terms of candles to qualify for the initial system to turn on. In other words, the first three green candles definitely had their consecutive higher highs. So as of basically this candle right here, the system turned on. And it remains on. We, we stayed steady with green candles. So the first three turned it on. The remainder of the candles then start looking for the next uh, layer of our requirements, which at this point would be looking for that 20 period simple, right? So let's say I put the 20 period simple in here, and what would happen at this point is we could have the aggressive setting for the 20 period simple, or we could have the 34 EMA. Now here they're kind of overlapping. Sometimes there's more of a distance between them and the 20 period is more aggressive, an entry. But here we can see 
that the 20 period simple and the 34 EMA have been hit and we would have a swing trade at this point. The trade would have triggered during the previous candle as has a swing trade for myself already triggered manually. Okay. I was hoping to get something out of this Euro US dollar today when the news of concern about the Greek bond, uh, Greek debt reorganization and, and, and finding a, you know, a solution to that came out. I was hoping for a deeper correction than what we saw on the daily, on this uptrend. Okay? And we just didn't get it. I would have loved to have seen a correction down to the 20 period simple. Just simply didn't get it. It's a situation where we have, you know, was the system ever turned on? Do we ever get those three consecutive green candles? At some point we did with the higher highs, absolutely. I think we had them probably by candle four, five, six back here. Okay. This is where I'm going to have to find that control as far as when we go blue and neutral, how many candles will define the trend has transitioned out and shut it down before we get three consecutive candles again. Okay. So if it's shut down back here, one, two, three, no, not yet. One, two, three, yeah. So it would have turned on, it, it would have turned back on, I should say. What did I say? One, two, three, right about here. So that means if it turned back on right about here, entry, 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 entry. Okay? Have I lost anybody yet? And this is pertaining back to, this was, uh, I believe, Whose question was this? Scott's. Scott's question. Okay. So again, how many blue candles will shut it off? And then, you know, getting back to three consecutive with the 10 pip higher highs, when does it turn back on? And then when, do the, when does the 20 period and 34 EMA high become valid for entries? And that would have turned right back on here because we didn't get three consecutive higher highs here. The third candle petered out. No, no, no. One, two, three. Yes. And then it's on. One, two, three, four different entries long. Okay? And again, that's the 20 period simple. That would be the aggressive option that I talked about earlier in our discussion. Okay? All right. So, again, this can be used on any time frame. All right? The thickness of my... Candles, all I've done as far as the difference between the grab you download from IBFX and what you see here on the chart is I've gone into the indicator settings and actually made my EMA lines a little thicker and not dotted. Because one of the things that a lot of people were having trouble with when they first downloaded the wave was it was distracting to them. So obviously that setting is there to change later on, but initially it's kind of more subtle, thinner and dashed, so it's not as bold on the chart. And I think eventually what you'll find is you'll make the transition to what I have here, but in the, the, the installation is dashed and thinner, but you can go in and change the settings. That's one of the things we always make sure you can do. You can change the settings, you know, to suit visually whatever it is you need. Okay? As far as how, how much of a hit we need to make, I think if the value of the 20 period EMA is X and X is reached, uh, a, tr a trigger should, at that point, you know, we should have a a, an entry that triggers. Now, perhaps part of the entry is something different. I mean, for those of you that want a more conservative entry, you can shut off the 20 period simple aggro and just go with a 34 EMA high. For me, you know, what I would do if I was doing this manually is I would, I would basically park a limit, a conditional order at the value of whatever the 34 EMA high or the 20 period simple was. So it's going to be a, just a touch. I don't need it to penetrate a certain amount or a certain amount of pips. If, it, if that price is hit, the EA would trigger an entry. Okay. So 
in terms of that question, I think I will use simply the value of the moving averages. All right. All right. So going from here, let me just mention that the website that I showed you earlier in our discussion, that will be the daily Forex trading edge will be going live, I believe, next week. We'll have a lot of the videos there. We've upgraded our YouTube account, so instead of having uh, our discussion here broken up into four or five individual videos, it'll be one full you know, video from beginning to end. So I'm very excited about that. You'll be able to access that through the dailyforextradingedge.com website. So we'll be kind of segueing away from the Daily Trading Edge at ibfx.com, although we still will have updates there um, posted. And we're certainly not abandoning that whatsoever. We're just actually expanding it, and that's where our attention has been going to. So I hope that I've shed some light and some transparency on what it is I'm looking for. In terms of the entry, we'll talk about risk management in the next session. We'll talk about managing the upside the session after that. So I hope you understand some of the criteria that we're talking about specifically today, which is defining that trend. You know, when does the system turn on and start looking for those entries? And then what's going to define an entry? So thank you very much for your questions. It made the session, I think, uh, hopefully a whole lot more productive and useful and you know, I really want you guys to feel a part of what we're doing here. Uh, my hope is that you're already familiar with Wave and the Grab, so when you look at these ideas that I'm sharing with you, you know, again, it's kind of a kind of a process where, again, I want to have the transparency for you all, and then also share with you what it is that I'm hoping to to program in. So thank you so much for your time and, and for your thoughtful questions. Much appreciated. And I'll see you in the next session. Take care.